So I wanted to take a look at uh, this particular unit. And these are all the same type of unit. These are all what are called splitters or couplers. You can use them to split, split one thing into two or take two things and kind of combine them into one. And they come in different sizes and different connectors and different frequency ranges and different power levels and stuff. Um, this is a really old one. This one's uh, DC to one gigahertz. This is from Hewlett Packard. This was part of a kit um, that was Part of some test kit for something, I don't remember what it was, vector voltmeter or something, I don't, I don't remember. Had a return loss bridge and some other things, and this was part of the kit, a, uh, a splitter. And this is a splitter by Mini Circuits. And this one's good from uh, 0.002 to 100 megahertz, very broad. So this is probably. Uh, I think this one is actually constructed a particular way. This one, I think, has resistors in it. So this one is, says DC. So this, one's, this one definitely has resistors. This one, I think, uses um, RF transformers, uh, as I believe this one does as well. Uh, this one is a little splitter. I think inside of here, oh yeah, this is mini circuits as well. I'm sorry, I didn't build this one. I thought I built this one, but this is a mini circuits as well. So. Uh, mini circuits device. This one is good from 10 to 2 gigahertz to megahertz to gigahertz. Uh, mini circuits. These are these two are mini circuits. And this is uh, sent in by a viewer. This one is a Compel. And nice thing about this one is uh, it has four outputs. So one in, four out. And uh, yeah, so I don't know anything about this. We'll have to see what frequency range it might have and uh, see if it works. So let's hook it up and make some measurements. Okay, so let's uh, sweep uh, one of the outputs here um, and uh, we'll see how this one looks and then I'll just, I'll move it down. You know, this will be number one, two, three, and four. And so let's take a look over on the, uh, over on the spectrum analyzer. And you can see here, this is what we're sweeping. We have some harmonics every time uh, we generate a signal, there's the series of harmonics that come with it, but the, the biggest signal is always the signal that we're interested in. So these are all the harmonics. They move it at, uh, at, at, at twice the speed, three times the speed, right? Just, they kind of go faster than the main, the main one, if you've ever seen a sweep before. But anyway, you can see this is sweeping out, and I have it on max hold there, so you can see the, uh, the envelope there. So the, um, uh, the output of this device is a about plus and minus 2 dB, something like that. So yeah, not too bad. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect, uh, I'm gonna disconnect from number one, I'm gonna connect to number two, and we can see that number two is acting exactly the same way. It's, it's tracing that stored uh, max hold there just fine, we'll go to Port number three, let me screw it on to port number three. Port number three looks exactly the same. I'll put it on port number four, port number four. Yeah, port number four looks exactly the same too. So that's a very nice splitter. Um, each port is giving the same, the same output. So uh, the next measurement that we can make is the, um, uh, Oh, what it's called, Sep the separation between the two channels, right? The isolation between the two, that's the word, the isolation between the two channels. So we will uh, bring in the signal. Let's see, let me go back down here. Uh, so to measure isolation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our signal and we're gonna disconnect it from here. And we're gonna put a 50 ohm load here, okay? So our inputs got a 50 ohm load on it, and we are going to inject the signal uh, into one of these. So if there's any crosstalk, uh, we will see it between these two ports, all right? So let's see how we're doing over here. So now, uh, let's see, we can do max hold on this.
And so you can see the, uh, the isolation between the two is very, very poor at low frequencies. This is starting at 200 hertz and going to uh, 1.8 gigahertz. So yeah, not very good isolation, not very good isolation at all uh, for this device. Okay, let's uh, let's open this thing up and uh, see how it's constructed inside. There's various constructions for splitters. Uh, they can just be a Y-shaped uh, resistors. Just have a resistive divider. Uh, they can use um, RF. Um, transformers and you could uh, have one winding come in and then two windings coming out all of the same size right so let's say a, a five turn and then two other five turns and then you've you've taken one and and duplicated on two different ports so you can do it that way um, let's see how they did it on this one all right it looks really pretty inside uh, so this is the input and these are the four outputs so you can see that uh, it comes through this strange thing here uh, where it keeps getting duplicated and then it splits up into two and then they're duplicated. So this input section is kind of duplicated here and here. And so how does this work? Well, uh, if we take a look at the input, let's see if it's at the point with. The first thing it does is it, it hits this little uh, path here and have a duplicate path over here. So half of it's going this way and half of it's going this way. So these are obviously like little inductors. So there's an inductor here, an inductor here, and then it looks like there is a resistor, right? So, and then it goes again, and there's a resistor. And it goes again, there's a resistor, and yeah. Uh, very, very interesting. And it's on, um, uh, alumina, uh, ceramic ceramic substrate. Looks like it's uh, gold plated. Yeah, it looks like a high a high quality one. Now it doesn't have very good isolation because of this uh, because of this resistors. It zips right through here, and that's why it was very very good at DC because it just sees DC going through that resistor. Now it's going to be better isolation between this port and this port because uh, it has to come all the way around. But uh, yeah, probably not all that great. Uh, we could measure that, I suppose, now that we know the secret. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know how you design these things. It's interesting that the traces get fatter and fatter as we go through, too. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of black magic voodoo in this one. Um, pretty cool. So, it did have a name on it. Uh, if somebody finds a data sheet for this thing, Compel... Um, but anyway, yeah, there's the inside. I've never seen one like this before, so uh, new to me. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and uh, set the isolation measurement up again, and we'll go between uh, one and two. Uh, it was really bad. We'll go between uh, two and three. That should be that should be really good. Okay, same setup this time. I'm going to terminate the input, and I'm going to run the. Uh, I'm going to look at the difference between these two now. Um, I was on adjacent ones, but now I'm on these two different groups. So the group one, group two. Um, and we can see, we can see how that's doing. And we can see here we have the old, uh, the old trace up at the top. That's the uh, uh, input to output. And then this is from port one to port three. And for port one to point three does have some isolation. It has about 20 dB of isolation, but only above, only above 600 megahertz. So. Uh, yeah, it's not very good. Uh, so it's great for just, just splitting. That's probably great for combining, uh, but it's not good for isolating between the two. Anyway, I found that quite interesting. I've never seen a, uh, a coupler made this way before, so that was, uh, that was new to me.